So today we're going to take a look at this piece of kit I picked up again at a ham fest about a year ago. It's got a nice wooden box, it's got ventilation slots on the bottom. Let's open her up and take a look inside. So what we have is an ammeter. It's got these beautiful mounting posts up here. Just beautiful. There's a two and a half amp input, a five amp input, and of course the common. It's got these two shunt bars over here which are interesting. This beautiful meter movement. Obligatory calibration sticker, so it was calibrated 513-1966. So it's got a few years on it. Just a beautiful piece of kit. Uh, I think I'll go ahead and power the thing up and we'll see if it'll actually uh, measure current. So one of the interesting things to note are these two bars up here. They're actually rather interesting looking at them. Inside of the cover there's an instruction sheet with calibration info and some information on what, how those bars are connected. So there's a series connection for the low range and a parallel connection for the high range. I'm going to be testing the low range at this point, so I'll go ahead and move those straps over to the low range and be back. So I've gone ahead and moved the strap over to the low current range, which I'm assuming is the 2.5 amp measurement input. Let's look at the test setup. I'm using my Rigol DP832 power supply. We're coming down to the 5 fish EL2 constant current load that I've talked a bit about previously and it's in series around to the ammeter and back over to the power supply. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the output one on. On the Rigol supply I have it outputting 5 volts. It's currently at 0 amps. Let me bring the current up a bit and I'll bring it up to about half an amp. And we can see over here the deflection. Oh, that reflection is horrible. It's someplace between 0.5 and 0.75 amps. Uh, this meter may be well out of calibration, or perhaps I didn't zero the meter movement. Well, the zero, meter, meter movement's pretty close to zero. We bring the current up. There, it's coming up on half an amp. Definitely not tracking. There is 900 milliamps. There's right at an amp. And it's now measuring a little bit high. Interesting enough, I can hear something singing inside of the box here. One and a half amps, it's pretty close to on. I've heard the fan kick in on the Rigol power supply. 1.75 amps. There is two scales definitely off on the meter movement. Of course, it hasn't been cowled since 1962. No surprise. Two and a half, and I'll get it right up under three amps. Coming up, getting close. 2.99 amps, which is reading two. Oh, I've actually overdriven here. Yeah, 2.5 amps is giving me a meter movement deflection of 2.5 amps. So it's definitely not linear across the scale. Let's see if I get back down to where I can hear it singing again. I found that it's rather interesting. There's a very high voltage hum. lean in here and see if it's coming from. It is definitely coming from the meter movement, at least from the measurement box. I'm not sure what it is that's singing, but there's definitely a high frequency oscillation going on inside of the box. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull off this cover here. There seem to be five screws which hold it on. There's a couple up here high. 
and the three down around the base. I'll pull those screws out and we'll take a peek underneath. So let me attempt to lift that off and frame here. Uh, not a lot to see. There's this metal plate with the three nuts coming up through it and the meter movement which is of course fully exposed here. It doesn't have the, the glass cover. So nothing too exciting. Down through the hole we can see the little adjustment to set the zero point on the meter. I've gone ahead and put the cover back on to protect the meter movement. Uh, this was very intentional as I move the unit around. I don't want to be sticking my fingers in and actually damaging the meter. One thing that was interesting to note, sorry about the reflection, is this screw up here is separate or different from the other five. It's actually a flat screw where these actually have a machine screw head. So interesting difference in screws. I've also noted that this screw down here is different from the four around the base. These again are a machine head and this is kind of a flat head, not really a hex. It's just a different screw. I'm not sure if there's any significance to that or not. I've removed the four screws and I would like to pull this up out of the box on camera. It's heavy enough however I can't do it with one hand. I'll see you in a second. So taking a look inside we see a couple of things. There's a four microfarad capacitor here. It's rated, oh, it's hard to see. I don't know if I can actually rotate it enough to see it. 50 working volts DC maybe. It's hard to say. I believe that may be a non-polarized capacitor looking at it, although I could be wrong. We've got a couple of inductors mounted here. Just a couple of bobbins with wire wound onto them. Those of course feed up into the unit. Let me clean this cobweb off here, it's kind of nasty. Of course the big silver can is the meter movement. Coming back around there's that capacitor again. We have the shunt resistors. So remember we had the, if I remember correctly, the 2.5 amp tap here, the 5 amp tap here. Let's actually rotate it up and confirm that. Yes, the 2.5 amp tap, tap comes up through here, the 5 amp through here. The common comes in here. It's like the common feeds through this wire into the movement. And then we have the four connectors with the jumper bar to set the current range. These are labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. And interesting enough, somebody in red pin up here has labeled the heavy wires coming out 1, 2, 3, and 4. Not exactly sure what all is going on inside of that can for the meter movement. As much as I'd like to open that can up and take a peek inside, I'd really rather not. I'd rather keep the unit in, in good shape. I'm not sure we'd see much in there beyond the meter movement. Don't know. So sorry this is less, less exciting than I thought it might have been. But hey, it is what it is. It is a ammeter manufactured by Weston. Last calibrated in 1966. I believe I said 62 earlier. Obviously 1966. Just another pretty piece that again sits as a static display in my entertainment center. Hope you enjoyed this short video. Bye.